Hi, everybody. Um, so great to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me to speak. Uh, my name is Tom Chaco. I'm from the Port Phillip Eco Center down in, uh, in Melbourne, Victoria. Uh, we are an environmental not-for-profit organization, and we're, we're community managed as well. And um, we mostly concentrate on uh, waterway protection through uh, citizen science research and education as well. So we educate for sustainability and the environment, and we work with schools and um, students from every year level all the way from the, the, the little early learners to uh, tertiary institutions. Um, the citizen science projects that we run uh, happen on Bunurong country, where the, uh, where the Eco Center is located. Uh, it's very place-based, and um, therefore I'd like to pay my respects to the uh, traditional Bunurong elders um, of that country that are still alive today, and we recognize at the Eco Center that that land was, was never ceded. Um, I'm calling in from Wurundjeri country, or Coburg today, um, and I pay my respects to those elders, past, present, and emerging, emerging as well. Uh, my job at the Eco Center is um, I'm a marine biologist, um, so and I'm the, the principal scientist as well. And I've been running citizen science projects for the last three years. Um, and a while ago, I was in a bit of a uh, <laughs> in a bit of a mood because what started, I was doing a lot of research into citizen science projects and, and, and really how to design one that is um, set up in a way that everybody can understand and takes, takes into account volunteer management as well as the uh, science components. And um, this, this also coincided with um, where I discovered that um, scientists who were running citizen science projects in the community had basically run these projects with the help of, of volunteers and then kind of just made off with the data, finished their PhDs and then disappeared into thin air uh, without ever feeding back to, to the contributors of this science, to the volunteers, what happened with the data, what the results were and things like that. And as I started looking around, there seemed to be a bit of a, a trend of this at the time. So this is a number of years ago, thankfully now. Um, and when I, so those two things kind of happened in parallel. And um, when I went online and started looking for um, ways of designing citizen science in a responsible way, I couldn't really find any guidelines or any ways of working or, or designing a citizen science project um, that actually took the needs of, of the volunteers and the communication and the feedback loops uh, in mind as well. So it was all about, you know, how th there were some evaluation papers, but they were all published in scientific journals that are not accessible to the public. It wasn't even accessible to me. I had to kind of like illegally get them from Sci-Hub because, you know, I work for a not-for-profit, so I can't access these kinds of science papers usually, and I had to get them from friends. Um, and basically it said, you know, it was really strong. I'm like, you know, if you're going to do citizen science, you need to follow these steps. But all of these steps related only to getting the most accurate data, getting data that's usable, um, you know, making sure people are trained and, and things like that. But it, it never really took into account the massive effort and relationships that you need to build to, to be able to work with everyday people in the field. So it didn't really take the needs of the volunteers, of the citizen scientists themselves into account at all. Um, and so in response to that, at the Eco Center, we developed a citizen science rubric uh, with a team of interns from WPI, Worcester uh, Polytechnic Institute in Massachusetts, USA. And uh, this rubric um, was originally designed to evaluate existing citizen science projects. So if you are running a project right now, whether you're a scientist or uh, a community member, um, you can use this rubric and go through it and, and score yourself on, on how you're scoring and all the different, uh, all the different uh, subjects that make up the quality of your work. Um, and it takes into account that, that human factor as well. So I will quickly share my screen. I just, I'm, I'm not going to do death by PowerPoint because it's only five minutes. I just wanted to quickly show you um, these, just a little snippet of these slides. So, um, this is, uh, these are two pages from the citizen science rubric. And as you can see here, you'll see in the, uh, on the sidebars, you can see uh, scientific contribution in blue. And then there's a few boxes that say participant recruitment and retention. And then underneath that, so the one that's kind of on in the background here, says communication. 
And uh, in the columns, you'll see a level zero, a level one, a level two, and a level three. So you can actually go, when you're either evaluating or designing a new citizen science project, you can actually use this rubric by um, just evaluating how you're doing on all of these different elements. Like how are you tracking? For example, when it comes to participant sourcing, which is all the way down with the first uh, yellow box that you see, um, level zero, you can see that participants all come from a similar demographic. There's not much of diversity. Random in inconsistent sources, the participants do not come from organizations or networks. Um, level one, you would score, uh, would be participants come from similar demographics and a few inconsistent sources. Some participants come from organizations or networks. And so through the level, so with level three being kind of like- Just the, about the 30 effect. seconds left, um, sorry. Yeah. Just. That's all right. Um, so this is, this is a very quick snapshot of what the rubric is, um, just to make, make it more inclusive of the needs of the volunteers as well. So you can download this for free. Feel free to use it. Um, I'm also really keen to have feedback. So if, you're, if you want to use this rubric, have a, have a look at it and test it with your, uh, your project. I will put a link in the chat now. Uh, so please do download it and please do let me know what you think. I think we're a little bit uh, due for an upgrade. Um, I would like to put in uh, a little bit more about uh, attracting diverse audiences. Um, so there is definitely a, a, a 2.0 on the horizon. Uh, but I just wanted to offer this resource to you guys um, to use and to test. And, um, Thanks very much, Fran. Um, 